Good idea. It's the morning Joe to your morning Joe. It's the blue collar to your blue collar. It's the lab coat to your scientists. Speaking of scientists, y'all want to learn something today? So I'm going to just read this satire piece um, that I did for my uh, for my college uh, newspaper, the, the, the stentor, the chive part of it, which is the smaller, shittier onion that we have here, <laughs> which I used to think was a terrible... I used to think that it was a stupid, dumb name and that it was unoriginal because they stole it from the onion. But I realized that maybe, maybe the person who may be the person who started a satire newspaper, I should have a little more faith in them. <laughs> um, and and then to me then at that point, I decided, okay, yeah, you know what? It is a smaller, shittier onion on purpose. And that that is very funny. Um, <laughs> it sounds to me like a band name. Like I named my band. Oh, Jeff, after... you're finally here. Wow. Uh, wait, I'm not here yet. This, this is not Jeff part of the bit. Hold on, hold on. Roll it back, my guys. Bad. Jeff's not here yet. Let's <laughs> keep it going though. Here, don't worry. <laughs> No, they won't notice. They, I'll just edit it out. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking I was going to read it. Um, I'll tell you guys the title in a second. Has anyone seen? Does anyone know where Jeff is? No um, idea. Negative they'll on never, the Jeff. They'll front. never know. No, no, no on the Jeff front. Yeah, I don't Hold know. On, let me check my app. The, the Jeff Dar. Oh, Jeff Dar. Here, I'll check Jeff Dar too because he might be closer to me. <laughs> yeah, I got no service. <laughs> Oh, that, is that Jeff? That hey, sounds Jeff. like Jeff. <laughs> What's up? Oh, hey, dude. Jeez, how much cotton did you vape, man? Dude, so my is Jeff that what Dar. We call it now. Did we call it cotton now? Yeah, I actually paid for Jeff Dar Gold, which just tells me how much cotton he's ripping at any time. And he, um, he's he just ripped like thirty G's of cotton. That's so like Simon Hill level vaping. I was, yeah, uh, I was. I knew we were going to podcast. I just didn't realize it was like right now. So like, Oh yeah. Just keep talking. I'll, I'll catch up. Okay. Cool. 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 <laughs> so, um, fittingly enough, the satire article that I wrote, uh, Jeff, I, I'm glad you were able to join us though. Uh, I know you're a little, uh, a little late here, uh, but no worries on that. So, uh, fittingly enough, the title of my article is jewel vapor exhaled with final breath takes edge off dying. <laughs> By Aiden Kinsella. Chilling in the doctor's office last Thursday night, Jonathan Snorrell coughed weakly, snuck his frail hand under the robin's egg blue flannel blanket covering his body, and reached for his pocket. Stuffing it with hand to his mid-wrist, John's digits fingered around the pocket systematically for a moment, looking for his vape. Finding their mark, his phalanges delicately palmed the sleek gray object and Jonathan pulled his hand back up to the surface for a breath of fresh air, but a sudden knock at the door had him scrambling to put his hand back right next to his penis. May I come in? Of Jonathan stopped, clearing his throat. <clears throat> of course, he said. Thank you. The door creaked open without urgency and a middle-aged woman with brittle red hair lumbered into the room, surrounded by smoke puffing a cigarette. A panicked look on the boy's face told him all she needed to know. Son, show me what's in your hand. He did as he was told. Seriously? You can't rip fat cotton in here. But you're smoking! He shot back with a wheeze. Smoking is cool! She bellowed. Hand me that. Seriously? Yes. You gotta be fucking kidding me, Doc, he spat. She stared at him with malcontent, and after considering his options for a moment, he handed her the device. Jesus Christ, child, she muttered, shaking her head and walking to the window. He watched as she opened it and flicked her own cigarette, still smoking, out into the cool autumn air. What flavor you got in here? She asked casually, 
turning counterclockwise to face Jonathan. Hold on. First, actually, to your point, that was rad as hell, John said in earnest of the doctor's sick sig defenestration. And to your question, it's cool mint. She examined the USB like for a moment and then looked to her right thoughtfully back out the window. After a few moments pause, she set the vaporizer down. Son, your results are in. You're going to die. And it looks like it's going to be sooner rather than later. A shadow fell across Jonathan's face as the news settled in his mind. But to the doctor's surprise, it was accompanied by a stoic look. One of morbid understanding. How long do I have? He asked after a few moments. Not, she quietly replied, glancing at his jewel. Was it the vaping? Yes, son, it was. I figured as much. Clearly, she stated matter-of-factly. Tell me, was it worth it? Hell yeah, man. Really? Honestly? Yeah, dude. I love cool mint. It's not like I didn't know there were risks. It's just so good. I figured, like, YOLO, right? Can I... Can I hit your jewel? She asked, her voice wavering with uncertainty. She'd never tried anything like this before, but it must be amazing. It has to be. And smoking causes way more deaths every year than vaping ever has. Sure, man, but it's low. Just, like, don't kill the pod, okay? Yeah, of course. Thank you so much, she said, turning around and picking up the small metal object gingerly. I promise I won't kill it. Yeah, because, like, I got to hit that as I'm going out. I got to go cool mint into that good night, you know? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, of course I understand, kiddo, she said. No intention of heeding his words betrayed in her voice. A moment of silence hung in the air as Jonathan watched her expectantly. She glanced back at the table, contemplating if she should really do this. She decided she should. She did. They waited a few moments. So, Jonathan pondered aloud. Holy shit, that's good shit, blurted the doctor. Her mouth a hacking smokestack. See? Yes, holy Christ! Now, you gotta try again, and this time, zero it. John taught her what zeroing was, and how to hide the jewel discreetly in her lab coat sleeve. The doctor attempted it and succeeded easily. Shit, kid, this is way cooler than cigarettes. I know. Here, can I see that back? Expected John reasonably, as the vape was his, and she hadn't even lent him a Soren or given him a joint to hit. I'm not done, man, she shot back. Doc, it's my jewel. Come on. Dude, come on. Just let me hit it like two more times. They went on like this for a while. The doctor inconsiderately taking a few more hits in the process, withering away John's last minutes until he had none left. Indeed, only a few seconds of life did he have remaining when his property was finally relinquished to him for one last sick cloud. He exhaled it as graciously as he could, happy to die by the hand of the thing that he lived for, and closed his eyes, no longer able to hold the jewel in his fist for he could no longer make one. The jewel clattered to the ground, but John was gone before he could see if the doctor would go on to pick it up. At press time, Jonathan was in heaven because of vaping, borrowing a true platonic ideal of the e-liquid vaporizer from his friend Sasha, who was also in heaven at the time because of vaping. We liked the fact that heaven chose mango vape clouds as their ground clouds. We thought that was classy. When we arrived for our interview, St. Peter explained to us that he wouldn't just let anyone through the pearly gates, and that we would have to conduct our business outside. The only ways we could get in were if we knew a code name for someone inside, if we let him hit our jewel, or if we were a female. As a news organization, we were unable to fill any of the entry requirements for heaven, and thus had to ask our interviewees to step outside for questions. Once outside, John got busy vaping Sasha's vape, though he had a platonic ideal just like it on him with the same pods. And while he was doing that, Sasha got busy explaining that in heaven, just like back on Earth, people like to pass around their nicotine devices that all do exactly the same thing as each other because they all think it would be really cool to get infectious mononucleosis. (laughs) 
Once she had apologized for calling Mono by that absurd name, she explained that she was a bio student, and she then told us John's story, the story you just read, with clouds of vapor pouring out of her mouth all the while. We asked Sasha after her recent account of John's departure if she, unlike Jonathan, had any regrets about her vaping habits. When I was alive, I was still in school and being a bio major was killing me. My jewel was the one thing that kept me going. She smiled. I suppose I don't regret vaping in my death. No, not at all. Good idea is a brain trust your brain can trust. It is wait, a comedy wait, podcast wait, did we where we start find already? creative. Hey, yep, yep, I'm yeah, sorry, sorry Jeff. Um, what what's happening? I I just woke yeah, up. We're starting. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, you just woke up. Did you fall asleep? Should I read that again? <laughs> I had All this right, really guys. weird dream. Check this out. Uh, I was I was like inside, and I was like so I, I was doing something called ripping fat cotton. And then oh, you there, can't rip fat cotton inside. There was a doctor who went out a window. And I had a no. morbid understanding of, of cool mint. Something like that. <laughs> I, wow. I don't know. Apparently children are dying because of, of, I don't know if they're being stoners or smokers. I don't know. And then Sasha got busy with infectious mononucleosis. Did I get everything? You got every. I think you got everything. It sounds like you are awake. Okay, good. All right. Brain being trust. awake for the podcast... It's a good idea. Good idea is a brain trust your brain can trust. It is a comedy podcast where we find creative, actionable solutions to your real life problems. I am Aiden Kinsella. I'm Bradley Berkowitz. One of you guys just jump on it. Go for it. Go do it. I'm George Diaz. Hey, George. I'm Jeff. And that's Jeff Richardson. Hey. And is this is, is good, good idea. idea. Oh, Hell God, yeah. It sounded like someone. I sounded weird. Can I try one more? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, and three. This <laughs> is good idea. Yeah, everyone do your own. Okay. Right now we'll do a we'll do a round table. I'll go first. We'll do it in the order of how we started. And this is good idea. And this is and, good idea. Uh, fuck. Bradley, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and this hey. is good idea. And this is good idea. Oh, that one was sexy. I like that. Yeah, that was really <laughs> sexy. I think I'll just cut all the other ones out. And I maybe I'll just make George, do you want to cut an intro for our show <laughs> yeah. that we can play oh, before our theme George, song? Do sexy intro. <laughs> George, do a sexy intro for so like I'm like a my brother, my brother and me almost like a cold open before the theme song before the cold open. George, I think you're supposed to say this is a good idea again. <laughs> no, no, I want George to make up some shit. Like, do like an intro for us. To make it, we can make a couple cuts. And welcome back to uh, Monday. What what day is it today? What day is it today? It is Saturday. Welcome to the Saturday jazz section with me. And Say your name, George. Your Saturday jazz section with George Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so before the before, <laughs> are you saying before the? <laughs> Paco Bell's canon. Are read? you saying before th what? Paco Bell's canon. Yeah, before Pokeball's canon. I know, I just wanted to see if I could do it because I've heard that fucking recording so many times. Um, listen, like I feel like I have perfect pitch for that. Um, that was actually pretty good, not going to lie. Thank you. I should learn what the starting note is so I can use that to my advantage. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, are you suggesting that we play uh, and uh, th welcome back to your Saturday jazz session? It, here it is. And then yes. It's, <laughs> yes. And then at the end of the show, before we play the Spencer cut of him saying this episode is really interesting too, because it just ends. Um, uh, or whatever. It we'll is. have George exactly. say some non sequitur bullshit in his sexy. Yeah. Voice. We'll have George say some non sequitur bullshit. So <laughs> let's, we'll do that. Um, so this is, this is a non-conventional opening, but I think it's really fun. Uh, George, 
can you say some more non sequitur bullshit for the for the prior and the outro? So, like, and you can, but you can do it in your nice voice, and you can sort of do it however you want, but just sort of like hype up the podcast in this really almost absurd way would be very funny. I'll uh, I'll see what I can do. Okay, hell yeah. The tagline I've been using is uh, a, a lot in our advertising has been a podcast for smart people. So, um, which it really is. <laughs> But I also believe that everyone is a poet and artist and a genius. So I think that it's a podcast for anyone who wants to learn is what I mean when I say smart people. So <laughs> take that with, uh, take that, uh, ego, egocentrism with a grain of salt. Is that <laughs> egocentrism? I don't know. Whatever. Uh, George cut some shit. Let's do it. <clears throat> Good I'm idea. Super pumped. It's okay, sh- sh- everybody. Sh- sh- All right, Cor- George, go ahead. You got this. Good idea. It's the morning Joe to your morning Joe. It's the blue collar to your blue collar. It's the lab coat to your scientists. Speaking of scientists, y'all want to learn something today? Oh my God. Holy shit. Okay, that's perfect. I feel All right, like George, I learned congratulations. That was I good. think I now, now have a calling as an NSFW voice actor. <laughs> right? Well, okay, see, I feel like the same. I feel like I have that same situation. Last night I was uh doing homebrew hijinks with Kat and Andrew and uh Bill and Dylan and fuck, I feel like I'm forgetting people. Carrie. Kari. Whatever. Kari. I gotta Kari. keep going and talking about this. Uh it's a great group of people. I think I named everybody maybe. Um, anyway, it's uh, so Dylan fun. Irish. Did you mention Dylan? Yeah. Dylan Irish. Yeah. I said Dylan. Cool. We got Dylan, Andrew Carr. It doesn't matter. It's fine. It does matter. You They're were there. awesome. I was there. That was oh, the most that's, important I, that's who I'm missing. <laughs> yep. Okay. Anyway, I was there last night and, uh, before the show, I had this great conversation with Kat who has become one of my best friends at this point on the internet, at least. Um, cause she's just like the most supportive and creative leader, just such an interesting human being, um, with so much love in her heart. Anyway, Kat's become one of like my best internet friends and she, uh, was, uh, I think commented like very seductive at one of the fucking jokes I made into the microphone, which was not. Um, not sincerely seductive in any way, but I was like, I try. Uh, and she was like, I know. And I was like, see, I actually kind of do try. And I was like, thank you for knowing. And thank you for acknowledging it. And not in, it, it's not weird. And that's what I like about it. There's nothing weird about the acknowledgement. It's just like that, that the fact that cat appreciates the fact that I'm playing the character I'm playing game, recognized game, man. Game re- exactly. It's game recognized game. Cat's cat's awesome. I really respect cat. And then cat is also really good at showing other people love and respect and s- celebrating uh, human beings for being awesome. So anyway, w- without further ado, let's do our podcast. We were. I was just. I just wanted to appreciate that idea of like sexy voice acting is totally totally my shit. If you want to hear me do that. You can hear it on this podcast sometimes, but like when I play Faith on my Friday night live stream, it's like anything fucking goes, man. And you can see my face and everything. Holy shit. I got a, my mouth like partially <laughs> open, ready to kiss all the time. It's a very you know? sexy performance. I got to say, I checked right? it out last Thank night. You. Super, Thank you. Super. So very sexy. <laughs> okay. Enough about how hot I am. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> acting I'm actually cold <laughs> I mean a snuggie acting excuse you um Bradley <laughs> yes hello Bradley, Bradley seems really quiet is there any way to yeah. be louder uh I'm hello well cause he's record remember he's recording on a separate or you might not know this he's recording on a separate mic than he's talking to us on yes that is true 
I'm so. recording on a Yeti stereo mic and I'm speaking a day or oh, I see. Old, so. oh. That's the way to go. Yeah, my AirPods are also two years old. God damn. <laughs> okay, not two years old, like a year and a half. But I need to get I do think I need to get some new AirPods because I'm worried that I'm I'm like always worried that I'm half deaf now. Not half deaf, but like partially deaf on the left. But then I put on my headphones uh that are these ones that I'm wearing right now, and it reminds me that I'm not indeed half deaf. I just have AirPods, and I think one of them might be a little quieter than the other one. Uh, if I may suggest, like, uh, the ones that I use, they're not AirPods, but they're Bluetooth uh, earbuds that are really amazing. Okay, yeah, you should send... Uh, actually, yeah, just plug them here. Just plug... That's What are they? Ah, oh, crap. Pick of the week, baby. Pick of the week. Yeah, wait. Get <laughs> them can, later. Get them later. Yeah, I'll get them later. I'll get them later. Hell yeah. I have them on. Okay. Yo, That's I fair. just want to recommend that all podcasters do like us old people and have good old fashioned regular ass headphones. Uh, yeah, I, I you can get good, a Bluetooth uh, I'm wearing dongle good old- now, apparently, that'll connect them. <laughs> yeah, isn't yes, that yes. redundant? I'll never own anything called a dongle. <sighs> Why? It's a thing you can attach your headphone, your traditional mini output, you know. Yeah, you know, so you can charge a little Bluetooth connector so you can use your regular headphones. Okay, actually, wait, hold on. Hold on. This might be a game changer. I was going to make fun of it, but this... <laughs> hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I'm thinking Actionable now. solution is... Actionable solution. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. And uh, I, I want to go into a prompt first and then we'll come back. We'll circle back. Remind me. I forget to circle back sometimes. Um, I think that would be an interesting middle prompt to do. And then I want to do AJ's last. But for this one, senior citizen sports. Oh, yes. <sighs> sports for senior citizens. Bradley, this was you, right? Yes. Okay, awesome. This is a prompt from Bradley and uh, we're going to discuss... Uh, senior citizen sports so Bradley you put it down uh, what was in your head when you put it down uh, wa- water aerobics I was thinking because but like competitive because they already do that and you could make a pretty good I don't know like a synchronized water aerobics where they all sort of like get in the pool and then they they'd like like whoever's bones work the best basically is just the person who wins at the end of the day at that but it has to be old people because if it's a young limber person then it's like cheating so i think you have to be over the age of 80 uh and doing <laughs> water aerobics and then the judges judge but everyone gets it like at least a nine because we're nice and they're, over- they're like old people so like what are we gonna do yeah over 80 and you cannot have arthritis as a pre-existing condition when you join. <laughs> and the way you lose is you develop arthritis. <laughs> and then the last oh, living old bones. person from each heat, we'll call them heats because it's like swimming. The last living old person from each heat, we take one heat of old people every year, sort of like a, like a, uh, a reaping in <laughs> Hunger Games. Uh, <laughs> And then we just sort of follow them longitudinally until all of them but one develop arthritis or die. May I make a suggestion? Yes, please. As the competition goes on, the uh, the music played gets more and more modern. Oh, so it gets harder for them. Oh, on a meta level, it's like young people music is killing them. <laughs> Oh, that's good. And I like this, too, because that now we've established they do not get out of the water. <laughs> yeah, they just jump. <laughs> it's called they arthritis not... or die for a reason. <laughs> it's, oh, it's called arthritis or die is the name of the... So oh, I, bet, a, I bet there's a ton of people faking arthritis then, like halfway through the match once they learn what it is. Like, no, 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 I have arthritis now. Let me out but of the see, pool, it's please. like two minute heats, like you said, and then they get a minute to check and see if they've developed arthritis and then they go back in the water. <laughs> oh, it's it's two minute heat. <laughs> oh, no, no. The heat is each each song is a heat and each song they play a song from every year starting at like <laughs> at like the year 10, 000 1000 BC, yeah. CE or something. It's a Greek man cool. being on a drum. Oh, it's a guy yeah, like that. <laughs> Don't. It's the Odyssey. It's just the epic poetry of the oh, Odyssey. Oh hell yeah! I was no. gonna say green sleeves, maybe Beowulf. <laughs> I was gonna <laughs> say uh, Gilgamesh. Chinese, to be honest, I was gonna say Gilgamesh. 
Okay, I think Gilgamesh is Gilgamesh. the first one. That's what's is up. Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh? Put to music? No, 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 no. The they poem. have to do water aerobics to the Epic of Gilgamesh. Hell yeah. And so we're not skipping anything. <laughs> Here, uh, I'm going to just pull up a copy of the Epic. Let's see what this might look like. I do um, want to say that if we're if we do go into senior citizen sports, I think it's important to uh, just treat them like regular people. We're not we're not poking fun at being elderly. We know we'll be there someday. So we're going to we're going to do a lot of positive messaging and really show you that old folks can kick ass when it comes to yes. water aerobics. I die at yes. 22 and I will make fun of old people. Oh, Kung Fu for uh, for seniors. Kung Fu seniors. Kung Fu seniors. That's next. We'll do that one okay. next. Wait, but doesn't Jackie Chan already do that? <laughs> no, that's, that's Kung Fu that's, Senior. There's just the one. <laughs> he is the Kung Fu Senior. <laughs> He's, He's the, the senior of Kung Fu Seniors. Okay, here, here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go. So we're going to do... Uh, the the epic of Gilgamesh water aerobics. Um, hey guys, welcome to comedy sports. Uh, this week, <laughs> this week, senior citizen comedy sports. This is not here. Oh fuck, that's not a copy of the book. I need I need a PDF of the epic of Gilgamesh. How is this not? This has got to be like the most existing PDF ever. Ooh, they they here it mail is. you a clay tablet, Aiden, and you have to. It takes a couple days. It's you also of, have to translate uh, it from cuneiform. Bradley, I paid. I yeah. paid extra money. I got it right now. Oh, here it is. heck yeah, scribbed clay tablet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I had to. I paid it to a genie though, and my computer has turned into a clay tablet. So if my audio gets a little weird, That's, computers uh, are just complicated rocks anyway. They're basically just complicated rocks. Okay. All that shit's silicon. So, you guys, I'm gonna read this, and we're gonna. Then you guys are gonna do water aerobics too. <laughs> oh, oh man, I want to read this now. Uh, he was wise. He saw mysteries and new secret things. <laughs> he brought us a tale of the days before the flood. Gilgamesh. Are you on it? <laughs> I'm on a PDF of it as well. <laughs> oh my God. We're all here. Okay. Um, I doubt it's the same one though. I don't know. Yeah, maybe not here. Here, here, here. All right. I'm going to read it and you guys are going to do it. The, the improv of it. You ready? <laughs> the coming of Enkidu. Oh, there goes my ankle. <laughs> Gilgamesh went abroad in the world, but he met with none who could withstand his arms till he became to Uruk. But the men of Uruk muttered in their houses. W what did they do in their houses? <laughs> they muttered in their houses. Okay, okay, let's talk about this. <laughs> What? I can't hear you. Pause. There's a woman floating face down. <clears throat> All right. So we're, we're, we launch a rescue and the Epic of Gilgamesh has to cease while we retrieve. This is an hour Someone long call process. No, no, no. Too late. We go straight to the morgue. <laughs> <laughs> I think you still got to call 911 for that. <laughs> And scene. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it would be like if old people played sports. And that really showed that old people can kick ass at water aerobics they did too. It. Which they I did liked. it really good. I was so mm. proud. Um, okay, let's talk about these Bluetooth headphones. Hold on. Y'all, Gilgamesh is actually longer than you think. It's quite it an epic. It is really, really long. I think that's where they I get know, that right? word from. Epic. Yeah, was I it think actually it's actually called the, the oldest epic of epic poem? Yeah, it was. It's the oldest work of literature in all of mankind. Hear me, great ones of Uruk, I weep for Enkidu, my friend. <laughs> Bitterly mourning like a woman mourning, I weep for my brother, oh, Enkidu. My brother, you were the axe at my Aiden. side, my hand strength, the sword in my belt, the shield before me. What, Bradley? <laughs> what? 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 
I'm reading the Epic of Gilgamesh <laughs> right now, Bradley. What? You're singing the Epic of Gilgamesh. <laughs> That's no. how it's supposed to be performed. That is how it goes. Did you write that music or was that like to an existing tune? No, that was me. That was beautiful. I know you guys can't see me, but I was swaying to it. Was it was so inspired. Lovely. Oh, see, thank you guys. I appreciate the backup. It was inspired a little bit by um, Bradley. Can you guess? Hades Town? No. Skrillex? No. Although there was a Hades Town aspect, I think, to one of the lines <laughs> I did, but the 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 whole thing was inspired by the song uh what's that good one coventry carol y'all check this out the last song there was coventry carol there was we three kings since everything i know is in the context of of uh, madrigals uh what jeff Oh, the the um the last song in the Epic of Gilgamesh, it's it reads like a like one of those prayer calls where like churches like they'll like sing like over and over again, do the same words like the king has laid himself down and will not rise again. The Lord of Kulab will not rise again. He overcame evil. He will not come again. Like it just goes on and on. It's so dope. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell fucking yeah, yeah. Finna. Epic of Gilgamesh slaps. From the couch of many colors, he will not come again. From the couch of many colors, he will not come again. All right. <laughs> Let's talk about some Bluetooth headphones. <laughs> Specifically, the dongle. I want to talk about a Bluetooth dongle. Listen. <laughs> I keep thinking it's an innuendo, but it's not. Listen, no, it is. Listen, listen. You know those things you can order on extreme restraints? <laughs> and you put it on and you you jack up the <laughs> the voltage. Good Lord, and I'm showing my parents this. <laughs> and it's, well, listen. Here's the thing. You jack up the voltage, right? <laughs> and... <laughs> and then it vibrates harder but you have a remote that sort of connects to like a little thing down there a little dongle it's a bluetooth dongle and then that we could connect to the phone and then the song that you play at what volume changes the way that it vibrates and so you get a sort of a sort of light show for your penis <laughs> or vagina or both. Sponsored by uh, Disney's Tron Legacy. Well, I say light show, right? Uh, because when you put laser lights on a speaker that is uh, playing a song, the lights will move with the vibrations of the music. Because the the speaker vibrates heavily and the lights, uh, this is like a cool as fucking science teacher Mr. Rahman in fucking like eighth grade showed us this. Hold right. on, hold on, hold uh, on. Just you just spoke this into being. You are literally right now creating like a weird ASMR porn for somebody with a speaker dildo. Well, so here's what <laughs> this I'm is saying. The first right? podcast listen, sexual listen, aid listen, ever. Listen. <laughs> This is a good idea, and I have a pitch. There's a, there is a, there is a genre of porn. The the PMV, the porn music video. Oh God! Right? No. Okay. Listen. That hand in hand with this technology. Hand in listen. hand. And then, yeah, that, that sure, was yeah. hand in hand. Mm -hmm. yep. Let's go with that. Yep, yep, yep. Hand in hand. Hand in Vaseline covered hand with this technology. Right? Fucking hell yeah. Right? And then there's like some really well made PMVs. A podcast like for it could smart be so people. Yes. No. Are smart people not allowed to enjoy sex? <laughs> Good idea. The uh, program I think it's only you to. Podcasts for smart people are cut to, are cut to speaker light show. 
Executes Order 66. Order 69. Good idea. A fucks cast. <laughs> For Good smart idea people. After dark. <laughs> That's every episode. <laughs> okay, listen, this is not my fault. George, every episode is good idea after dark. What if we changed our what if can we change our logo <laughs> to be something, but it's in dark mode now. And Dude, it's good literally. idea, but it's in dark mode, and it's just like an updated version of the logo. I'll pay the guy who did. I will say you probably shouldn't use the 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 good idea sex dongle if you're watching something like Bill O'Reilly or Oh my news. god. Wait. Probably don't okay, do so that. first of all, we're calling it the good idea sex dongle. I want to copyright on this. <laughs> Hold on, let because me drive to the not, patent office. Because it's not a bad idea. <laughs> Listen, it's not a bad idea. It's a good idea, sex dongle. And are, are you sure? I think we're kind of slowly going into uh, bad advertising here. Oh, bad advertising? Oh, oh no, this what is, is solid. This is. Please oh. tell me somebody gets this reference. What is bad advertising? Oh God, it is. It is a. Uh, <laughs> It it is a it is a podcast that is like freaking amazing. I see. Advertising. Okay. Well, yeah, I don't know what that is, but I do know that this show was I think pro- whatever bad advertising is, this show I think was probably originally going to be that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. Uh listen. I really like the good idea sex dongle. <laughs> Before we go on, let's cut some sinister parent company and good idea promos. Uh, we're I'm I'm fifty two percent. Okay, we're fine. Awesome. I'm having a blast, you guys. Yeah, this is great. This is fun. Break it down, George. Break it down, George. George, break it down, George. Break it down, George. That right there's George, and he's breaking it down. George is breaking it down. George here is breaking it down all around town. He's breaking it down. I'm bringing it down for George, who's breaking it down. <laughs> Dark mode. Dark mode. Hey, guys. George Diaz is here to break it down for you. Hey, guys. I'm Aiden Kinsella, and George Diaz is ready to break it down. Break it down. I'm Aiden Kinsella, and I'm here to say George is going to break it down in a major way. Break it down, George. Break it down, George. Break it down. <laughs> All right. Hey, um, what would a good idea promo look like? George, you as a listener, how do we advertise our show? Shoot, I'm usually good at this. <laughs> You're part of the show. You're really good oh, at this. Oh, That's oh, what I'm put saying. Your, put yourself in the mind of a listener to a different show, a, a, a not as good show, obviously, because this is the best show. Let's be honest. But like a oh different gosh, show, it's not as good. And those people are hearing it and they're like, what is this amazing thing? I should be listening to that instead of this crap that I'm listening to right now. That's this. Good idea. Okay. Wow. Get into I feel it. like Jeff just did the whole <laughs> thing. We should just put that in there. People, do, well, will people believe empty. Jeff? Do it. I mean, you got to tell them what it is. Okay, well, what is it? Someone else do the work. Bradley, what is it? <laughs> Bradley, what is it? I'm you not do even the work. sure what we're talking about. Good idea. We're talking about good idea. What the fuck is this show? Smart people it's- with an open mind. Sure. Smart people with an that open That's George works. Diaz right there. He's a smart person with an open mind, so he would know. I like that it's smart people group with an with an uh, open mind one. Like they have a hive mind. 
oh, we're all, it's smart people with an open mind. All people, we're all part of the same fucking, it, when you strip away the ego, we're all exactly the same thing. Like, I mean, it's, oh, it's, man, and I we're talked all like about little, this on the last episode, a good idea. We're all like little tubes or like sucker mouths hanging off the bottom of like a giant floating blimp yes, brain. Yes, exactly. We're wow. all here on the earth, right? And uh, we love crafty and pucker tentacles. Yes. <laughs> good, good idea is a celebration. Good idea is a celebration of the social construction of reality as taught by Berger and Luckman is what it is. And we started good idea before I even knew what that meant. Um, but uh, Berger and Luckman discuss uh, human reality as it is formed by face to face interaction and uh, how people are all sort of these separate realities and we have uh, uh, separate subjective realities and then conversation creates the uh, closest thing to a true reality that we can see, which is kind of like what Plato said, um, which is what I was talking about in the last episode, uh, the closest thing to a true reality that we can see, uh, which is the, the intersubjective reality, the, uh, which, which is created by a constant pattern of reflective response. So a, uh, my response constantly, uh, if I am face to face with you, uh, or if we are on the phone together or whatever, we are able to constantly, uh, express response to each other and because of that constant expressivity there is a um, there is an intersubjective reality where two realities overlap as completely as they possibly can uh, or more than two realities and that's what good idea is good idea is um, a show that celebrates that so it's uh, not the philosophy of burgers it's not the philosophy I, of burgers. I was going to say, it, I would like to actually order a, a, a burger and <laughs> Luckwitch from uh, oh yeah from the Burger Hut down the street. I mean, if you're going, like, I Sinister got, like, Sinister Parent eight Company eight Burger it. Joint. Yeah. Let's, yeah. What is no, that's good. burger? What it, yeah. What is burger? Who that's is what, the kind of question we ask here on Good Idea. <laughs> Burger's a whole lot of things. Listen, what does it mean to eat a burger? How does a burger communicate about the culture that invented the burger and that eats the burger? Does a burger does have to mean? be made out of meat, for example? That no, that it's Bean impossible boys. to make a burger that would be made about out of out of anything else. Bean boys. Bean boys. Be Bean boys. Bradley, get in on this. Bradley what do you think about Bean, Bean boys? boys. Boom, did it. <laughs> Nailed it in one. Got yes. it in one. Yes. Get it yeah. on Bean Burgers. That's what Good Idea is. And it's, it's a show where we talk about things, uh, about what it means to be people and about what it means to mean something. And, uh, and we disagree sometimes. And that's okay, too. That's also part of the show. And it's one of my favorite parts. Uh, so I really hope that you'll come listen to it. Uh, that was a long promo. And I might have cut it down. So I don't know what all of it have you heard. But it was all there. And it certainly was good. And I will put the whole thing in the actual good idea because why the fuck not? Um, share it with your friends, guys. Listen to Good Idea anywhere you can get your podcasts. Um, I weep for my brother Enkidu. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Richardson, 2019. <laughs> Batman v Superman? Oh, you mean the Epic of Gilgamesh, but worse. Yes, exactly. All right, you guys. I got a question for you from AJ Generis. Shoot. I would like to have casual sex with someone I've been friends with for a year. How do I ask for this without it being weird? Hmm. You got to go the old fifth grade route. You put, you put the option, you put the question on a, on like a piece of paper. And you put, oh yeah. And you then both the answers you get, you put two answers on there. It's yes. And double. Yes. <laughs> Oh, dog, don't play yourself like that. It's got to be like, yes, it's got to be one of those butterfly things. It's like, yes, no, maybe so a little bit. We could fuck once and find out, you know, like give him some <laughs> options. You see, you see with each with each position, you got to do the You got to do the 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 foldy thing. The foldy thing. Yeah. There's I called it match. the butterfly thing. That's not its name. <laughs> yeah. I have no there's idea a, what it's There's called. a match 
um, sealed with wax to the bottom of the note and um, uh, it's sealed with love to the bottom. And then uh, there's a little striking pad, too, so you can burn the letter when things don't work out. <laughs> Although I would suggest making sure you have the uh, the memory white pen from Men in Black. That well, well, this is like that. This is metaphor therapy. Um, but it's literal. basically the same thing. But literal. So, it, yeah, well, literal. Listen, I only like alternative methods to the real thing. I prefer adjacent methods to said adjacent methods, which just comes around all the way back to the original methods. When I podcast, oh, that's, I like the, to put, uh, that's the telephone method. <laughs> yeah, alternative. Exactly. When I put when I podcast, I was about to make a very similar joke. Rotary when I podcast, screen. I like to take two cans on <laughs> a, connected by a string and put one on top of my microphone and then go outside with the other one and a long string leading out my <laughs> dorm hall uh, through all the doors to the outside. Oh, and in then like I a sort of, cartoony way where it goes in one open door yeah. out the window yeah, into yeah, yeah, another window. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boomer approved. Exactly, exactly. Boomer approved. Perfect. And then my uh, headphones are going out my window because I've punched a hole in the screen. I haven't actually, but I'm in this fiction. My in name this is mind fog and that then, we're in yeah. with you. Yes, exactly. Mind freak. And mind freak, Chris Angel. Here we are. Uh, <laughs> and I'm out there with my can and I'm talking into the soup can and it's going comically all the way back over to the microphone. And that's how I get such good audio quality. So a Rude Goldberg machine. Fuck yeah. Hey, Bradley, how do you podcast? Uh, I sit outside with the birds uh, in nature uh, and and I talk to the stump. The stump records what I say and broadcasts it to the world. Oh my God. It's very surreal. This sounds it's, like heaven. Can magic. I live there? How do you do this? How do you have a, a stump mic? I get deeper to the forest. The stump? I, I speak to this stump. I have never tried. Probably. Oh, this is beautiful. And, and I so, sit there, and he, he, the world knows. They know what I think. Oh, yeah. Yes. The world, because it's all connected, it can hear you, and it just <gasps> sort of puts it onto the podcast. Yeah. Boop. Apple. Wow. Yep. Boop. Apple. <laughs> there it is. It's, it's like, right just like Eden. Just like the Garden of Eden. Oh my God! No, but seriously, oh that God. is like if we get a Star Trek future like and like people get to Star design Trek their future. own like it's colony or whatever, like, that would be like the stoner poets' colony, where they all just hang out by stumps and talk to rabbits and everything's a speaker. Yeah, just exist in podcast heaven. It's the it's the unemployed from Hades Town. One of the unemployed. It's the unemployed in real life. <laughs> Did I talk on here about uh, the line in in the in Hades Town where in Epic Three, uh, at, at least in the Broadway version, and I never noticed this. How he goes, "Oh, it's about me." H- uh, Hades says that when uh, Orpheus starts singing. No, I do. Well, very fun. It's so oh. funny. Well, there it is. Now I talked about it. It just, it makes me laugh every time. It's like this little, it, I'm sorry. It's like this little joy of mine. Every time I hear it, it makes me laugh. It's like really funny. Um, I don't know why, but it is. Oh, it's about me. Isn't everything we consider <laughs> funny just a Pavlovian response? Basically, yeah. <laughs> Essentially, I mean, yeah, basically. Whoa. Whoa. I didn't even think about the, I'm con- t- the connection I was just joking. What the heck? Well, okay, think about it. Think about it, right? I mean, enthememes are the root of comedy. Okay, kids, uh-huh. let's sit Memes. down. It's time to learn something. Wait, 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 wait. I want to I wanna just drop in real quick. Uh, yeah. Th- th- you're talking about enthememes? Enthememes. Yeah. E-N-T-H-Y-M-E-M-E-M-E-S. So I need to know T-H- what that word means. You yeah. need to know what it means? I do not know yeah. what that means either. I was about to teach you. Do it. You guys want to learn? Go and learn. Okay, do you all know what syllogisms are? Mm, N- no. Barely. Okay. Bradley, do you? No. 
Okay. So if you ever take a logic and styles of argument class, which I haven't, but I've taken com classes and I study comedy, so I know these things. Um, and also philosophy, but that's mostly a hobby that I do in my free time because I'm a nerd. Um, Good idea. We'll jerk ourselves off. I don't know that I was jerking anybody off, but I, if I was going to jerk myself off, I was I would use the good idea sex dongle. Um, uh, and I would and listen. Here's why it's called the good idea sex dongle. It only works with episodes of our podcast. Use discount code dongle for an extra sixty nine percent off. <laughs> <laughs> listen listen this is our patreon bonus okay nice <laughs> nice this is awesome okay let me hit you what with what, 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 what were we talking about right okay and the memes so a syllogism is a simple logical argument it is um socrates is a man all men are mortal therefore socrates is mortal is a syllogism. There are three parts. There's a major premise, a minor premise, and a conclusion. I do not fucking know the difference between. So it's a, major a thing and a that minor backs premise. itself up. Yeah, basically, it's a it's a it's a logical argument. It's th- it's a. It's that's a, yeah. what that's called. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, to yeah, remember that's a from uh, so, my intro to philosophy. <laughs> and yes. then the all jokes, the meme, and the memes. Yes, all jokes are built uh, on the concept of the nth meme, basically. Especially jokes. Comedy in general uses it uh, as its sort of root. Um, but like jokes use the nth meme as almost a format. Um, so it's uh, an nth meme is an incomplete syllogism. So uh, if you uh, take out Socrates is a man from um, Socrates is a man, all men are mortal, therefore Socrates is mortal. And you just say, all men are mortal, Socrates is mortal. Um, your brain automatically fills in the fact that Socrates then must be a man. That incomplete syllogism is still completed. It gives the audience ownership of the completion of the syllogism and thus a stronger understanding of the concept. And if it's persuasive in nature, a bigger belief in it and a stronger memory either way of the thing because they have made that connection on their own. Um, in comedy, when you make a joke, you uh, do the same thing. And it doesn't matter which one you take out. You can take out the major premise, you can take out the minor premise, you can take out the conclusion. It's an nth meme either way. Um, and and that's the thing about like, you know, comedy is interpreted in different ways. People may find jokes funny for different reasons, right? Uh, it's subjective because it's based on how you complete the joke in your head. And so some things are funny to some people that are not funny to other people um, because it has to do with the absurd and the subversion and everything else. Uh, so the more able you are to predict jokes, the less likely you are to be uh, to have a laugh response elicited in yourself, for example. Anyhow, it's like uh, you got junked out on nth memes. Me? No, like people that that like can't laugh because they they're too funny, they're oh, too knowledgeable I mean, about like, what's funny. <laughs> I I can laugh, but a lot of the time I have to force myself to do it. Oh, uh, force laughs are so bad when you're editing your podcasts. Y'all know no, this, but like, like I don't do it on like, my podcast. Oh, that was such usually. a fake laugh. Uh. I don't really do it on my podcast. It's a. I almost think it's bad. Um. You have to do it in real but life like, for sure. That's what I'm saying. Um, but I don't do it on my... Po- I, I generally try not to do it at all, but I, sometimes <laughs> I feel like an asshole. Um, and also, I have to do it on my podcast sometimes, but I can do really convincing ones because I can genuinely make myself laugh. I just have to find something uh, else funny. That's what I like about improv, is improv gets me to laugh a lot still. So I have found that the better at improv I've gotten and the more, um, the more sort of uh, spontaneous comedy I've introduced myself to and introduced to the things that I do, I have found more time to laugh. Whereas stand-up comedy, when that was what I was most interested in, um, I was finding that I was losing the ability to laugh because it was becoming predictable. And that's not me saying stand-up is bad. There's lots of great stand-up. 
Um, it's just normal for people who do stand up to lose that ability to laugh. So anyway, enthememes. <laughs> you get junked out on them. Um, they're, they're persuasive techniques. They're also used in jokes. Um, so like if you go like, uh, I saw a sign that said, watch for children. Uh, seems like a fair trade. Uh, which is like a slightly botched Dimitri Martin joke. Uh, but it's a good, it's a good joke. Uh, you, you have, um, and like, this is what my Ted talk was on before I even knew what Anthem memes were. Like, I was just like talking about this shit because, uh, there's something intuitive about it. And a lot of people talk about it, I think, without knowing what Anthem memes are. Um, but learning the language for it was really powerful. But you have that joke of like, watch for children seems like a fair trade. Um, okay, well, you see the sign that says watch for children. You're thinking of it in that con uh, context. Uh, and then you fill in the fact that, oh, this person has misunderstood the meaning of watch. Like, oh, they mean a different. So the, the syllogism, it is a complete statement that they saw the sign and this is where they got. The joke is in how did they get there? Um uh, so it's finding that connection. It's the same reason like, uh, improv jokes are funny too. You just, uh, they're not written beforehand, but it's, how did they get there? What is that connection? What is the heightening? It, it's following a pattern. It's Monty Python, right? Like the, it gets progressively more absurd, but it still makes sense in the reality. What is the next logical progression of this thing? That's Anthem memes. That's why comedy is just logic and it's not as intuitive as people like. I mean, it is intuitive, but it's not as like ethereal as people think it is. Is enthemes etymologically related to the word meme? That's what's been I going mean, through my mind this whole time. <laughs> it must be, right? Because enthemes are, is a Greek term. Isn't it a, like a Greek term for a unit of symbolism or text? A meme? Yeah, like a unit of um, thought. I would think so, because it, it, it a meme is defined as an idea or concept that is spread from person to person within a culture. I think meme is a little later than the Greeks. I think it's like the 50s. Not oh. true. So yeah. me memes are just plagues, but they give I mean, you funny, the word funny. meme may be uh, the, the word meme, I believe. Here, let's uh, look, look it up. I'm looking it up right now, from... y'all. The word meme is a neologism coined by Richard Dawkins. Yeah, so it's from 1976. It's a shortening imitated of meme. Thing. Oh, but it's from the ancient Greek mimema, imitated it's thing. Imitate a thing. Huh. Which is totally probably connected to Anthem meme. Right, so meme is a little takeoff on Anthem meme and other meme. There's probably like a Getsena meme, a bunch of memes. Yeah, if you look up Entha meme, the first thing that comes up is Entha meme meme. <laughs> oh shit, now I'm imagining memes. like an old junkyard and it's like, uh, eh, county Entha memes here come. We got, we got Joseph memes, we got some Les, Lesla memes, some Giorgio memes. Yeah, uh, yeah, you can look through the box of Georgia memes. I mean, we got so many. Uh, we got the Diaz. Uh, get the Lopez. See, this, I don't know. <laughs> I just did it. I just, I just went, huh? That's fu I was like, <laughs> that's funny. I like, I do that all the time. I'm like, that's funny. Like, I don't laugh. I still, it's still, it's bad. I sometimes <laughs> will laugh, but a lot of the time that's just that. And that's also that same enthememe junk out is how I'm able to deliver most of my bullshit with such like absolute straight face because it's just like, not funny to me it's just how my brain does it i mean it makes me smile it's amusing i really want to think more about bradley's outdoor stump mic situation okay let's do it and then i want to answer aj's question and then i want to get on get on done with this shit man plot twist i did never answer AJ's i just want to know what what that's normal what woodland <laughs> creatures bradley has in his podcast heaven did we lose Bradley? Is Bradley still here? <laughs> I see. We can rebuild him. Yeah. 
We can make him stronger, faster, smarter than us. Harder, better, faster, stronger, uh, Aiden Linux. Harder, better, faster, stronger. I want to listen to this I don't story. have a soundboard, guys. My voice just does that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just podcasting, and then you get the strong urge. You like in front of the microphone, and you're like, you're like, I have exactly I know what to do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna immortalize. I'm gonna further immortalize Borat as a cultural. <laughs> like, like I know. I know this is dissemination is. I. I've never watched Borat, but uh, but I but I love Borat. It is so important to me. <laughs> it's, it's Every time Borat somebody, dude, me. I stopped Morgan Spatola on an interview of Everything Is Awesome. I, I know. I it stopped was so good. her Keep down. Talking, yes. I said, "You just said my wife. I have to say this. I can't stop it." <laughs> my wife. <laughs> And so she was good. like, you stopped me for that. And I'm like, I'm sorry. It just has to be done. Moving on. I was in improv class on Sunday and uh, we were doing like uh, scene mapping. And so moving like, uh, how can we see this? Uh, how can we see the game of this scene in another context or, or not the game of this scene, but how can we create a game of this scene by seeing this normal thing in another context? Uh, so w- there was a scene about it's like uh, someone having like a kindergarten parent teacher conference, uh, kindergarten parent teacher conference, conference. Jesus, a Congress. Speak. Yes, <laughs> kindergarten parent teacher. Kindergarten Congress. Congress. Yes. 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 Okay. Kindergarten parent teacher <laughs> Congress is very funny. I'm gonna Congress. write that down. <laughs> kindergarten parent. That's good. Kindergarten oh, wait, parent I have a teacher line. Congress. Hold on. I have a tagline. <laughs> Kindergarten Congress. They couldn't do any voice. <laughs> Kindergarten <laughs> parent teacher. Con- uh, do 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 something Congress? Question mark. Co- coloring outside the lines. Kindergarten parent teacher Congress makes. History. Uh, Kind (laughs) Kindergarten Parent Teacher Congress. Illinois finally has a chance. (laughs) So anyway, that's a great example Mm. of a scene map, by the way. Speaking of comedy (laughs) construction, it's moving the idea of... um, of Congress over to the like, oh, this is what I think it would be like if I think it'd be a little something like this. Uh, (laughs) um, That's what scene mapping is. It's the I think it'd be a little something like this. Um, If... And you see the, uh, the what if Congress was kindergarten uh, parents <laughs> and kindergartners <laughs> and kindergarten teachers. Um, or I guess, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm getting the sense that it's kindergartners, teachers and their parents. You see, it's, uh, it's uh, the not, teacher's it's parents. Not, uh, maybe. It's not determined by population. It's determined by how many uh, like it's not determined by like the entire population. It's determined by how many like the ratio of kids. How many pudding adults. packs do you have in your lunchbox? And then, and that's what oh, scene mapping is. The Federal so Reserve is funny just jokes pops. like that. Federal Reserve is just putting pops. I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I'm, I'm seeing the putting pops angle as like a sponsorship sitch, but like also, yeah, good, good, I'm good. I'm seeing a we reality show in, there. in which we have Kid Congress, which has no stakes, happening totally in a separate room, and that's just kindergartners pretending with paper and pens and stuff that they're doing Congress. Oh, okay. And then the other half of the show is the parent teacher conference, and they like actually run the state policy and stuff. Maybe okay, okay. I, I, Hold on. I think you just kind of made a uh, Italian reference. Slightly. A what? No, I think on good idea we just accidentally do Hatalia like every other episode. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> else knows what this part is. Of the, I know what it is. Oh God! In the original fucking uh, parent-teacher conference scene, you guys got me all distracted. I want to talk more about the Congress, but there's so many (laughs) wonderful things to talk about. Oh, my God. 
what an episode. Um, <laughs> but the, the they they had talked about how the teacher's wife. It was the principal. It was the principal's wife was bitten in the by the kid or whatever in the classroom and then the pr- parent was like why was your wife in the classroom in my reflection scene of it my my map scene uh we did it but with uh but with vampires and so of course uh they gave me that because they wanted uh the biting connection my my teacher was being clever and they were like let's give them this nice one so I was able to be like, you know, yes, of course, it's good that your kid was biting in class. We saw the mapped scene. Uh, how is it different if it's vampires? Uh, uh, but then I got to do this great joke because my, <laughs> here's the thing. I was a vampire. So I was talking like this. Yes, your child beat my wife. <laughs> and, the, <laughs> and so... Everyone in the room busted up like it was like my my per- the the teacher was not ready. No one was ready for it. Um, nice. Anyway, that's my scene mapping story about my wife. <laughs> the child beat my wife. The my child wife. beat my beat wife. My wife. You just ended me right in the shorts, Janet. Yes, and. Um, we talk, I think we got the Congress thing pretty locked down. I mean, like that's, that was I'm a scene mapping it. example. No, I mean like it needs to be a TV show, man. It needs to be like Lego sets. Sponsored by Boss Baby. Are all the children, all the parents and all the teachers <laughs> elected? Yes. Is it mandatory service? Yes. <laughs> once okay once a month every wednesday it's they chaos. have a late start the kids are <laughs> they have a there. late start at an 8 p.m meeting the kids are falling asleep it's a nightmare <laughs> it's it's ancient oh, it's an Athenian politics meeting. but with less racism and sexism <laughs> here okay jeff jeff listen First of all, there would be less racism and sexism, George, but there would be more like, hey, you're fucking fat. Like, there, that would be that. That would be there. Also um, ageism. Also ageism. There'd be like, hey, you're six and a half. I'm seven already. I'm seven and three quarters. It's like, why are you in kindergarten if you're seven, idiot? And then the seven-year-old's <laughs> like, my mom said I wasn't emotionally mature enough. <laughs> Y'all, and what kindergarten did you go to? Like, were you in a <laughs> war zone? Know. Listen. Like, kindergarten, you're supposed to be nice and sweet and love each other. Yeah, but this is Congress. Listen, here. <laughs> Congress Jeff. hardens a kid. <laughs> Congress hardens a kid. Jeff, you Once said you the 8 p.m. The meeting, they're all getting sleepy. Which I think is fair, but they're Congress children, so they can stay up till at least 8.30. By the time you're five, you've seen too much, man. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I think that it would be funnier. First grade is a killing ground. 8 p.m. Wednesday night meeting is funny, but I think it's funnier (laughs) if once a month they just have to go to school. Uh, They have a late start, and all the other older kids get to go to school late. But the kindergartners and their parents and all of the teachers have to show up for Congress from from eight to ten a.m. Oh, every God. third Wednesday of the month, and the the they bring in donuts, but the good ones are always gone by seven fifty. Oh, fuck! Because that one mom gets there like, and by that one mom, I mean most of them get there They're like thirty years early. It's Paula. They're we all know Karen. it's Paula. You could just say her name. Uh, Paula, I'm Paula calling gets you there out. at 7.30 and takes the best donut every time. <laughs> you know I want the jellies, Paula. <laughs> and then she won't even let her children eat the donuts, too, is the other thing. No, 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 children. It's bad for your teeth. I think she's going to her PTA meeting and selling them. I'm just saying. I'm, ti- I'm honestly tired of John bringing his baby every time. <laughs> he brings the fucking baby. That is a smart like, baby, though. That baby could be in kindergarten. That I baby mean, could totally be in kindergarten. That, That's that a baby, smart baby. That the, baby could totally be a boss baby. Uh, that yeah. baby is definitely boss baby material. If his brain development material. continues, because he already knows his ABCs at, at, at one. So, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. At one. And it could have a huge you know, mega mind. Does he know how to count to five? Oh, Maybe does he climate know? change have we ever is solved by a 10-year-old that? baby mind. I think Genius. next... Next... Next um, fucking kid Congress meeting, 
um, we should ask the kids while we're meeting in here, we should ask the kids to take our baby and just see, just run him, put him through the ringer of kindergarten, <laughs> see what they like, haze him a little bit, see oh. what happens. You got to break him up to build him up. Yeah, he's only one and they're like five, six, <laughs> some of them are seven if they've been emotionally <laughs> held back or stupid. But keep in uh, mind, this is Kid Congress, right? Which hardens a kid. So it these, hardens babies, a, yeah, these are some these like babies fucking, are hitting the ground running, man. It's yeah, like running I mean, through a minefield. They're like, oh, this, you, you can hold your head up? You're in the shit, soldier. <laughs> This one year old here is getting a big head start. That like this is like the the fucking a big like head start. The, it's a, it's a head start for just pennies a day. You can send this one year old the kid Congress in the <laughs> arms. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm doing the same joke. Yeah, it's a good joke. Same uh, joke, so, different platforms. <laughs> AJ, to answer your question. Here's how you ask your friend to have casual sex with you um, in a, in a not awkward way. Um, how, however, the two of you usually communicate, whether that be uh, what, when you're talking about anything uh, important, not necessarily anything super serious, just anything like that is relevant to your lives that like is other than idle chatter. So even texting is fine, I think. Uh, and you say, hello, I think you are very attractive. Uh, or whoa, whatever whoa, else you say. Whoa. You, Are we still in the comedy portion of the show? Because that no. idea is weak. No, but <laughs> we're not in the comedy portion of the show right this second. But then we'll go back. You gotta and hit it. him this with the horny. Right, out, you gotta, you gotta come up top no with the oh, like. Fuck. We should no do comedy. It. I gotta go. Bye. That's well, that's saying, casual. I like Jeff's idea of hitting him at the top with "We should do it." Uh, but also I am a, just a really, really huge fan of, uh, being way too respectful and being just the most, the most kind and like chill. If I'm asking for consent, I want to do it in a way where it doesn't feel like I'm pressuring or asking for, or I, I'm not asking for consent. I'm asking if interest. It's hard to you know? gauge. I never found so the line just send that, Smash that was memes. like comfortable. Just send uh, Super Smash Bros memes. That's it. That's yeah, what, just that's send Super Smash. And that's how you get laid. <laughs> Listen. I don't think AJ's asking us how to get laid. I think they're asking <laughs> us uh, what is the, the what is the most effective or maybe. I mean, we don't. That's the problem. We don't know the context how, whereby the AJ assesses success in this area. For me, it would be a, a chill, no stakes, roll on to like a, maybe a hookup and see where it goes from there. But for me, I have to assess mm -hmm. the value of the friendship. Could it be changed in a bad way? What are the exit implications? You know, it's like you don't want to start a land war in Asia. You know, you want you know oh, you want to well, have an exit well, strategy. Not? These things because are all tunnels. important. But I think I if it's casual, I mean, you're just like you're like, yo, I had this weird <laughs> thought. Are you into it? No. Okay. Cool. What I worry about in situations like this is all gay people know each other, <laughs> and so it's like. What I are you gonna do this. if it's what if what are you gonna do if it's really awkward, right? Like, what if you make it awkward? All gay people know each other, and they're gonna talk. <laughs> they're gonna talk, and they're gonna hate you forever. Listen, no, but here's the thing. thing. Here's the thing. You can spin that what? into a positive. If they all know, you might find somebody. That's true. Maybe somebody hears that you're that you're putting out your wave. And George, that's where I was going. And so thank you for why I, why don't you do you wanna do you wanna break on that? I don't know what else I can say, to be honest. Do you mean break I mean, like I think do the, a f another funky slap bass like he did earlier? Yeah, do like a breakdown on it. No, I mean I just mean <laughs> I meant like talk about it. Um I think that that idea of like put out what you're uh, ask for what you're looking for, right? Like I think it's a AJ, that's the answer. Uh, ask for what you're looking for. Tell your friend honestly what the situation is. Say, I really, if, if this is a friend you really care about and you would like to have sex with them, but you don't care if the, if that doesn't happen and you would like to maintain the friendship, then you say, hi, I would like to address something with you. Or you don't have to be that even like fucking robotic about it. But hi, I'd like to address this with you. Um, I, find I would you really like to attractive. address this I'd with like you. Have, or... or, or I'd like to have sex with you. 
if not, that's, if you're not interested in that at all, that's completely cool. And I hope we can, I, I sincerely hope we can still be friends. And, uh, that is all. Thank you for understanding my uh, communication. I feel it's better to uh, whatever. I'm I'm spitballing this. Normally, I would rewrite this text message thirty times. Um, <laughs> that's that's a low ball in it, dude. You got to do it at least a hundred times. At least a hundred times. See, I don't, we're not no, trying to text. We're not being all polite right here. Yo, AJ, this is terrible advice. Do not follow this advice. But if I was in your place, I'd be like, hey. uh, you know, that normal level that we are at where it's like maybe every once in a while we'll be flirtatious. I'm going to step it up and I'll be like, yo, them titties, though, or whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, make it plain. I think, Jeff, here's the thing. Did that come <laughs> yo, from them the titties, heart? I mean, D- it's, Jeff, a, it's a strong Jeff, argument. Hey, that is a strong argument. That's right. <laughs> Did that come from the heart, Jeff? It Jeff. did because it's part of the chest area. Hmm. Okay. Jeff, from the heart. did that come from the heart? Honestly. <laughs> I need to know. Uh, I mean, obviously I'm exaggerating a little bit. I mean, if it were me, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd, you know, just step it up from whatever it's at. Yes. I want AJ to, and I'm speak because I'm speaking to a friend right now uh, about something that matters to me. I, it does. It's important. It's, it's respect is important and sexual expression is important and my friends are important. And so I want to, I want to talk about this for a second, uh, before we close out, I think you should express very honestly how you feel and exactly what your feelings on the situation are. I do not think, um, that you are wrong to not express that interest. If you are not wanting that to, to be something you express, you're not, you don't owe anyone, um, that expression. If you feel that you are not treating them differently than you would, uh, anyone else, it's, it just depends on how it is for you and what you need. And as long as you feel that you're respecting them, um, if this is something that you would like, uh, and you have that kind of relationship with this person where you're able to approach them about uh, uh, things that that are sincere uh, and approach them with things that are sincere and you trust them enough to have sex with them. I would hope you also trust them enough to not hate you for um, for suggesting that that might happen. And I would also say that you're a very wonderful person. And that I know you will not be doing anything with dishonesty. And so you are fine. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, most of the time advice to people that you respect is like, you're going to be fine. Like yeah, you probably exactly. already know how to do this, but for other people, it's really yeah. good advice. Like trust your instincts and, uh, honestly just spend a little more time with them and they'll get the idea, you know? If you want to keep the stakes really low, just invite them one more time than normal. Oh, yeah. Like wink at them a lot. Also say the word wink. Say sure, the, word say wink. the word wink, wink at them out a loud. Lot. That's good. Just meet them on the street and go, hey, wink. Huh? <laughs> but don't <laughs> wink. Hey, nice shoes. Don't wink. Uh, li- you can hu- hug them a little too long. Mmm. That's a good way. To Press tell them. with the boner or not? <laughs> no, keep the no. keep the hug exactly the same and just do some back pats. Oh, do some what? okay. I'm sorry? If you add back Excuse pats, me? that means sex. <laughs> back pats is a risky strategy. I'm not sure. I, I'll trust AJ's no, insight on this one. No what was that, Bradley? I, back pats are more back formal pats? than no back pats. Can nobody hear me? Backpacks. I can hear you. It's I, we're talking about backpacks. <laughs> I know. I can't say the yeah. word. But like, if you walk up to a, a person that you want a bone, and you're like, "Yo, I got these two backpacks. We got <laughs> granola bars, water <laughs> bottles filled up. We're going for a walk, and then we'll talk about. Do you want to do it with me? That's like some top tier aftercare, there, dude. That's backpacks. some top. That is. It is. It is. Um. Oh my god. I know how to close, and then we'll go into the outro.
Okay. We did kindergarten parent teacher conference. That was fun. Bradley, do you want to take us out after this? Sure. Yes. So this is a poem that I wrote junior year of high school. Completely insincere, mind you. This was (laughs) not like a creepy, weird poem that I wrote at somebody um, in a gross way. This was a comedy thing that I did for somebody that I really liked. Oh, God. Uh, And she thought it was funny. So it's okay. But it is, it's got some gross language in it. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Let's do um, it. It's also, it's also based on a legitimate personal story between me and this person about <laughs> uh, something that someone said to us, which is in the first line. And so uh, I don't know if my mom's ever heard this poem or not, but my mom is the she in the first line when it oh, says shit. she said make a mo-. Yeah, so... Okay. So Kristen Kinsella, prompt submitter, uh, she, she um, I, w- I won't give the whole story behind it. Uh, I will say I don't know uh, for sure that th- that was the joke, but I do <laughs> think that the strong implication was that, that that was the joke and that she thought maybe we wouldn't get it or something. <laughs> um, but I won't tell the rest of the story because it's irrelevant. The poem stands on its own. <clears throat> she said make a movie. So that's what we'll do. We'll film us a movie that stars me and you. I'll put on my GoPro. We'll find a location. Make the best fucking film in the whole fucking nation. We'll use lighting and props. It'll be my first time making a movie that might be a crime. We might need some costumes, a cop or a nurse. I'll empty my wallet. You empty your purse. You don't have a purse. Your pockets are fine. Your pants don't have pockets. Here, you can use mine. You really need dress up in film as an art. Without the right clothes, you can't play the part. We'll make it intense, but peppered with laughter. I'll even make pizza and nachos for after. But once we're done filming, it won't be the end. We'll put it online and our movie will trend and we can be proud of the work that we've done. I'll put down the camera. We'll have some real fun. I just got the strong sense that I've read that on this podcast. Damn. Yes, you have. I, I love what, okay, what I love take- so hard about it is that it like builds and builds and then it hits you with this solid wall of rap. I'll be honest. Oh, I got man. some major R and B vibes from that. Nachos oh, yeah. for after was like the greatest rhyme. I was, oh, I was into it. Can you do that line hey. again where you, where you go <laughs> laughter? Um, we'll make it intense, but peppered with laughter. I'll make us some pizza and nachos for after. Yes. Can somebody get Jason Derulo on the phone? I think he'd love this. I mean, now I feel like I have to leave it in because these two are so celebratory of it. Jason Derulo. (laughs) Um, Did did I just read it on the last episode (laughs) before this? No, 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 no. You you read that poem uh, ages ago, almost six to, to months, maybe probably more than a year ago. Oh, okay. Then I definitely will leave it in. Then that was a great way to close. See, I it it's been so long, you know. You forget your bits, but I I, I just it, it, the thing George said about good aftercare made me think of the nachos for after line actually, um, because like I didn't good know what the care. word aftercare was junior year, which is awful. Oh um, no. Uh, but like after I understood the, the show concept. that comes on after senior citizen comedy sports. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I obviously after know it's just the morgue for senior yes, citizens. Exactly. It's the morgue, it's hospice. It's <laughs> it's the morgue, it's hospice. Everybody after, after care doctors. porn video, but it's hospice. Scene mapped comedy sketch Ugh. by Aiden Kinsella. Dear SNL, please. <laughs> um Listen, you guys have an empty spot because of some some guy doing the racist thing. Uh, hire Aiden. I don't dislike SNL. I really like SNL. I would not be. I, I just don't know if I would enjoy it or not. Like, I don't no. know. I think. Uh, l- let me hit y'all with this. I think we should we should uh, take us out. You guys ready for that? Because this yeah. has been an awesome episode. And I'm so glad we've been able to have. um George Diaz and Jeff Richardson both join us this morning. Definitely, literally the longest good idea recording ever. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that. I think we did some good work here today, my friends. So, I agree. Thank you. 
thank you all so much for being here. And thank you, listener, for listening. Uh, we really hope you enjoy it. We're glad you chose to spend your time with us. Uh, if you'd like to interact with us or contribute to the podcast or submit prompts, uh, we have several means for which you can do that. Our Facebook group is Good Idea Podcast. Our Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram is at Good Idea Cast. And our Gmail is Good Idea Podcast at gmail.com. You can also find us on uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, Libs, and or Spotify. Uh, if you're finding us on a platform that's not one of those, good on you. That's pretty impressive. It is very uh, impressive. Although we might be on a couple other ones. It's a pretty comprehensive also, uh, list we've got there. You guys are somehow on Google Podcasts. Can I? Yes, I got us on there. Uh, I don't know what you mean by somehow. It's very difficult and it's not very optimized. Oh, fair. Okay. Oh, well, I hate the internet. I think I, I do think I remember it being very difficult. I also want to do a couple of quick uh, plugs. Should we do the plugs after? We'll do. We'll plug uh, George and Jeff's stuff and uh, our sinister parent. You know, we'll do announcements at the end because they're exciting. Before um, George leaves, I would love for him to read my fun little new slogan for good idea. Oh, I am so. Oh, down. you did a new one. I'm I, so. I've down. written a new one. Yeah. In the jazz voice, or just regular oh, voice? Fuck yeah. I mean, just do you, baby. I'll use this one then. I'm going to be able to put all these George clips uh, in my uh, fucking suite of audio files that I'm going to be collecting. Hell yeah. So, I'm George, the line board. is... George, the line is, good idea. You're having one. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Wait. Holy shit, man. That's really good. That's real good. Yeah. All right, George. It's all you. Dude, look at this resume builder you got, George. Hell yeah. Like, you you are, like, helping. Be you're becoming, like, the voice of Sinister Parent Company's uh, fucking shows. You I'm got, a marketing like, director like for a separate podcast, and so now I'm going to be the voice yeah. of an entire network. This is, this is great. Leaps and bounds. George. Though. This is what I'm saying. You got to put yourself out into the world. You guys, this is a lesson. George uh, found us uh, on Facebook, just like fucking sent in a application to be on one of our shows that we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, and he's become such a huge part of our family so fast. Um, it's so cool. It's so cool. I love the arts. Um, Podcast <laughs> fam is best fam. George Diaz. Man of action. Well, like he put himself out there. He said, I want to do this thing. And I said, okay, George, come do it. And that's like, here he is. And he's doing it in other places too. He's getting it, man. I respect that. I got mad respect for people who grind. You. Yeah. Um, I'm George Diaz. I get it. Grinding for skate in a <laughs> Tony Hawk. George, do, <laughs> do Jeff's recording thing. All right. Uh, uno, dos, tres. Good idea. You're having one. <laughs> Here, run that again. Get a get a little more reverb in there, like a little more, a little more bassier. Get a more gravel, you know, because I feel like you had some nasaliness to it, and I think that that takes away from your. Like I feel like you didn't say it with full I'm confidence, you know. No, I know, man. but I feel I I feel like you didn't say it with full confidence, man. Get in there. You got this. You're gonna sound so sexy. George, you got this. Good idea. You're having one. Oh, fuck yeah. I feel like I added fuck some yeah. country twang in there unintentionally. Yeah. I mean, it's it wasn't bad. I hey, liked it. It was good. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. Uh, Bradley, <laughs> do you want to ask us your questions again? Uh, all right. Favorite idea of the episode? <laughs> oh, favorite idea. Who do you want to go first? Uh, let's start with you, Aiden. Okay, that's me. Holy shit. Um, my favorite idea of the episode. Oh, boy. Guys, help me. Give me a rundown. What did we do? Let's see. Uh, you told us about a thing where you said your child bit my wife. My wife. My wife. <laughs> no, I'm not going <laughs> to. So he, he did a little Borat talk. <laughs> that was fucking funny. Uh, Kid Congress. Paula with the donuts. Uh, Epic of Gilgamesh, uh, good idea, sex dongle, 
dark mode. Oh, good idea, sex dongle. That's it. That's it. There, Bradley there it Berklich, Bean Boy. That was just a little thing I said. Oh, that's pretty good too. I'm gonna go with good idea, sex dongle for sure, though. All right, George. I gotta go with a uh, parent-teacher kindergarten Congress. <laughs> Hell yeah. This is a thing I kind of put together. Syllogism, 69% off. Okay. I like that breakdown. Um, sick defenestration. Bradley, how about you? I liked the epic of Gilgamesh. Yes. That was fun. I love yes. talking Gilgamesh. My humanities professor would be proud. My jewel was the one thing that kept me going was pretty good. <laughs> Oh God, did you guys like that? That was really cool. I'm glad. <laughs> it was like that was the first journalism. like legit. It was wild. It was the first like good prose I ever did. I was like, what if I just wrote a Neil Gaiman ass like p- scene for this? Yeah. How yeah, it uncoiled like a week? serpent. Pick of the week. Yes. Okay. Speaking of Neil Gaiman, I'll go first again. I, I just finished the graveyard book last night. Um. Excellent. fucking god damn so good guys listen to the graveyard book or read it on a paper like most people do but i'm auditory as fuck um so i don't like looking at things it like hurts my eyes kind of wonder if i'm dyslexic sometimes but i don't mm. think i am i think i just have a very very i don't know am i dyslexic if it makes my eyes hurt to look at words a lot of the time I don't think I that's remember, what that is. Uh, I remember there being like an eyes are tired joke in George Lopez, the show, and he's dyslexic, but it's like my eyes are tired. No, that's exactly what it feels like. It's And it's like not all the time. It's like if I try to do it for long periods of time mm. and it's not always, but it's usually always. <laughs> and I feel like I have to reread sentences. Is it always by Panama? A very underrated song. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Usually always is a really great show title. That's my new uh, fucking. Uh, it's mostly love, chronic love movie. It comes and goes. <laughs> it's usually always. Uh, George. Um, like, OK, so it doesn't it doesn't really matter, like what kind of Anything. media it is. Okay. We've done spending time with your dad. Like it's it's yeah. whatever. All right, I gotta go with uh, I, okay, okay. It's gotta be like it's gotta be Assassin's Creed Origins. I've been playing it again. It's still a masterpiece. It's still yeah. good. It's still good. Hell yeah! Best Assassin's Creed game. You don't even gotta like be in touch with the lore. You're good if you just mm-hmm. want to drop in. That sounds fucking amazing. Actually, ancient Egypt. Oh no, Hell it's in yeah. Egypt. Yeah, ancient Egypt. Uh, Ptolemaic oh, God. period. Oh no, um, the main protagonist and the voice actor are both people of color. And that's rare. That's fucking, that's, that's rare. amazing. This game sounds dope as fuck, man. I'm trying to get uh, Abu Dakar Salim, a.k.a. the uh, voice actor for Bayek, to uh, try and look into the local convention here because it just, like, we had our first year of it this year. You should and I ask him to... Nora from uh, Fallout 4. He was great. You should ask him to guest on one of your shows or something, man. I'm a small boy and I don't have an Assassin's Creed podcast. You have a network. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're going to, uh, here, once we launch SWRA, oh, that's what we got to talk about. Jeff, go do it. Do it. Do the thing. Yo, go. yo, 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 yo. I'm rereading the Dresden Files. It's fucking great. First two books are a little rough with the, it, 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 just get through it. It's like Star Trek. It's awesome. Uh, <laughs> Blood Ties is one of the greatest <laughs> books of all time. Uh, for a guy with a fucked up family, for a guy in a book with no family to get a family, it's beautiful. Lots of tears. I love it. Get into Aww. it. Judge Found family is best family. Jeff, I'm your family. <laughs> <laughs> Stop Dad? it. I love you guys. You're so great. I love you, man. <laughs> hey. Seriously. Bradley, go. You're up. What's your pick of the week? I have been reading a Kurt Vonnegut book over and I like it a lot and that's my pick of the week hell yeah Yeah. all right before we close out I just want to do one more thing um we got sinister parent company is our network we're doing shows I'm on something wonderful right away which is not what I meant to say hold on let me try that again (laughs) I'm on straight off the top of my headlines um 
I'm on straight off the top of my headlines with AJ Janaris. Uh, I'm a co-host there now. I fucking love making that show. It's so funny. AJ is so funny uh, and such an amazing improvising partner. Um, and I love the news. Everybody loves the news. Who doesn't love the news? <laughs> Y'all uh, love the news, we have, though. Yeah, right. We have Shattered Worlds uh, coming out. Kyle, my very good friend of a very long time, it just uh, it has has joined the cast now of that show to uh, I mean, he joined a while ago, but he is now officially his episodes are coming out, which is the most exciting. And I don't think he even knows. So I'm going <laughs> to uh, break that to him today. I'm incredibly excited. Uh, Shattered oh. Worlds is like a fun space epic RPG that uh, Jeff designed that we uh, play on the podcast. And it is an original uh, thing. We are, uh, Jeff works very hard on it and it's really wonderful. Um, and I play a fun lying fake German, uh, in space with psychic powers. In um, space. and the big, the, uh, and on Friday nights I do homebrew hijinks with a bunch of awesome people at, from, from six or, or from eight to 10 PST, uh, which is really fun. It's a D and D podcast. Uh, and then this is the big deal. So something wonderful right away, which is our long form improv podcast, um, is going to come out on, uh, for the, for the first time, we're going to have a release on Friday, uh, Friday, November 1st will be the release day. There will be four episodes up of the show, uh, on Friday, November 1st at noon is the plan. Uh, I'll let you all know if anything changes, but we uh, have been working on this show. It is a long form improv podcast. I'm going to put a uh, promo for it in this show too. Um, uh, we talked about it on everything is awesome. Um, I'm really excited to share that show with you guys. When it comes out, we're going to need everybody to go download it and subscribe and rate and review it and everything and fucking it will just be really helpful to us to have that uh, so the show can grow because we think it will be a really wonderful way to build a big artistic comedy community uh, all over the world uh, in Hell a way is. more than we have been able to so far and in a way that will hopefully help the shows we've already established do that even more. Um, thank you guys all so much for listening. Thank you, Jeff and George, uh, Jeff Richardson and George Diaz for being here. Where can people find you on the Internet? Uh, you can find me on Twitter um, at uh, Ready Set Fire One Two Three. Um, I have several work in progress uh, podcasts, and one of them is actually getting pretty close to getting the script done. It's Viva la Revolución, and uh, you can follow that on Twitter at Revolución Pod. Um, I'm always looking for questions on a uh, generic advice podcasts at, on Twitter at a uh, at Generic Advice One. Somebody took Generic Advice Podcast, and I'm still annoyed about that. <laughs> and also a lot more on the, along the way. But, hey, I'll get to those there's, when I get to those. There's a really beautiful irony, though, to <laughs> Generic Advice 1. <laughs> so like, we're just going to make this really simple I'm using for the you. oversaturation of the Advice Podcast yeah. genre to my advantage. Yes. Are you? You're trying. I'm we'll trying. see. <laughs> I'm just making fun. I do the same fucking shit. Uh, listen. Here's the nice thing, though, is that also just reminded me of my favorite license plate, which says, Be Yourself 3. <laughs> Aiden's favorite license plate. It's in Lake Forest. I know the people who own it. Oh, yes. Um, after I met them after like four years of seeing their car and thinking it was the funniest thing in the world. And they did not understand the joke. Anyway, go ahead. Y'all ge go ahead, Jeff. Where can people find you on the internet? Oh, yeah. I'm Jeff Richardson. Um, I'm on Facebook, uh, on Twitter, at El Jefe Tacoma. I do Shattered Worlds RPG, The War for the Tower, and Everything is Awesome is my interview show. And we're also covering Neon Genesis Evangelion, which, if you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix. It's one of the greatest shows of all time. And I'm just now watching it for the first time. It's, it's really cool. So check that out. Hell yeah. Thank you so much, Jeff. Oh, also, I'm on Something Wonderful right away with George and Aiden and everybody. It's great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm also on Something Wonderful right away. <laughs> Bradley, do you want to take us out? Uh, yeah, sure. Will Thank do. you. Uh, that was a good idea.
It's been a whole lot of fun. We're done here. Let's try uh, something wonderful right away from Sinister Parent Company. Check it out uh, on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Please, uh, they have my family. Please, they have. <laughs> they do have Doctor Fart Plumquat's family. <laughs> That's him, Doctor <clears throat> Fart Plumquat. Hey, can we try to cut? One other one that's maybe a little shorter and maybe a little less fart related. Hey, I thought I could start like a slate, like a Hollywood commercial. I'd go something wonderful right away. Take 37 clock. That's funny. Cause then it's very not improv. Beep, beep. <laughs> just at the start of this, just at the start. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. It's funny. <laughs> this is something hey, wonderful. You guys got your scripts, right? <laughs> George, come on. This episode is really interesting, too, because it just sort of ends.